Hello everyone, welcome back to the Capablanca saga. We are here uh, at St. Petersburg and it's 1913. We said that we are going to go uh, straight uh, to 1914 tournament of St. Petersburg, uh, but uh, I decided to uh, uh, show you this game and maybe another one from 1913 uh, so it wouldn't appear as if uh, Capablanca was only going doing negotiations from 1911 San Sebastian tournament uh, up until uh, the, the 1914 tournament of St. Petersburg. And uh, here uh, is the first time Jose Raul Capablanca faces, uh, well, his future rival Alexander Alexandrovich Alekhin. Now, this is the Savorin Cup, and uh, they invited uh, Capablanca uh, to come to Russia. Uh, they said that uh, they prepared a nice exhibition for him, where Capablanca will face three very strong Russian uh, chess masters uh, here, uh, young Alexander Alekhin. Capablanca is uh, about 25 years here uh, of age, and uh, Alekhin would be around 20, 21. Uh, but he's already uh, a very strong player. Uh, in, in the Hamburg tournament of 1910, uh, he defeated um, Savali Tartakover and uh, drew against Frank James Marshall. Uh, and in Carlsbad, he defeated Dr. Milan Widmar, who you all know drew, uh, who tied with um, uh, Akiva Rubinstein in the 1911 San Sebastian tournament. So already a very strong player, but he still has to make a name for himself. So basically, uh, here they are using him to test uh, the, the Russian masters against Jose Rol Capablanca, which is something the Russian uh, did quite often. And here uh, Capablanca would face three chess masters, uh, Evgeny Alexandrovich Znosko Borovsky, uh, Fyodor Ivanovich Dusyotimirsky, and of course Alexander Alexandrovich Alekhin. And uh, for Capablanca to win the Savorin Cup, he has to win all three matches. He will play two games against Alekhin, two games against Nosko Borovsky, and two games against Dus Chotimirsky. And if he wins uh, uh, all of uh, all of three matches, uh, then Capablanca will be the winner. Uh, and if he doesn't, then the one who has the best score against Capablanca is the winner of the cup. That's was, that was the idea of this uh, cup, but it's basically an exhibition, a, a showing of uh, Capablanca's prowess. And uh, Capablanca had a few other exhibitions. He he played a lot of games uh, during the negotiations with Lasker, and this is what one such game, and it's um, a, a really nice game. Uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, as uh, Alehin would become to known as uh, one of the uh, magicians of this era, but uh, for now he still kind of struggles in simple positions where Capablanca thrives. Uh, so let's see this game. Capablanca has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have d5, c4, c6, uh, we have the Slav defense by Alekhin, e3, uh, and knight to f6. And with knight to f3 and e6, we transpose into the queen's gambit declined. Uh, and okay, we have knight b to d2, knight b to d7 by Alekhin, and now bishop to d3. And this is uh, one of the cases where the knight is developed on d2, where black doesn't really gain anything by forcing white to lose a tempo here, even though the bishop was already developed, because after white captures with the knight, uh, you're not going to be able to kick away the knight uh, to, to a bad square, because now the e5 square is available for white's knight, as the knight on f3 also covers that. So after bishop to d3, we have bishop to e7 by Alekhin, and now we have castles. Uh, we have castles by Alekhin, and now comes queen to c2. And here, okay, Kabulanka develops the queen. Uh, there's still uh, uh, the, the obvious problem, what to do with the dark square bishop in white's camp. Uh, but, and, uh, of course, you're pressuring the h7 pawn. So here, uh, Alekhin has to make a choice. Uh, we're still pretty much in the opening phase of the game. Either he will go h6 to remove this pawn as a future target, or he will go b6, bishop b7, go rook c8, prepare c5, and so on. Uh, but uh, Alekhin goes for a different plan. But before we show you what Alekhin had in mind, uh, we will first uh, check out this very nice photo. It's a photo of... Uh, it was taken in 1913. I don't know if it's this exact game or or wherever, but uh, it is the first game Alekhin and Capablanca ever played. And uh, I don't think uh, they ever played another game in 1913 since this game was, was played in December. Uh, maybe it stretched, the Savoyan Cup maybe stretched to January, but um, I, I believe this is a photo from uh, from this event. So let's just enjoy it. There we have young uh, young Alekhin, who we said is some five years uh, younger than Capablanca. Uh, definitely one of, one of those greatest uh, photos in chess history. It's also available in color. You can just Google Capablanca Alekhin color, you will easily find it. So all, also a very nice image. Uh, but getting back to our game, like we said, uh, h6 a possibility, b6 another possibility, uh, Alekhin goes for d captures on c4. And we already mentioned this isn't the, the best way to go about this. Capablanca now captures with the knight, taking further control of the e5 square, and we have c5. Okay, 
uh, Alekhin has a different plan. Uh, we have knight c to e5, and now c captures on d4. e captures on d4, and knight to b6. And uh, Alekhin has a precise plan. He isolated Capablanca's pawn on d4. Uh, it, uh, uh, Alekhin now wants to, wants to make it a target. He wants to block it with his knight. He wants to play b uh, knight to d5, develop the bishop, go bishop d7, maybe c c6, get the rook into the game. And uh, then simply continue. Uh, but Capablanca shows him that this is far too slow, and uh, that uh, that h6 or b6 plan was was the way to go. Here, Capablanca goes knight to g5. And what's Capablanca's idea here? Uh, the knight was the only piece that was defending the d4 pawn. So uh, it's actually a very nice trap if if Alekhin were to capture on d4 or even just try and kick away the knight. Uh, uh, Alekhin loses the game. So feel free to pause the video here and uh, try to find. It's actually a forced mate in three to make it easier for you. <clears throat> uh, but a very nice idea. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds, a as usual. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you have just defeated Alexander Alekhin, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop h7 check. And now you will either capture and face queen captures on h7 checkmate, or you will move the king, for example, here, and then you get knight captures, rook has to capture, no other options, and knight captures is checkmate. Uh, the bishop is covering g8, and also the queen is still protecting the bishop on h7. So this is the idea. Uh, Alekhin now has to force back the knight with g6. Uh, it's not forcing back the knight, but uh, the knight uh, no longer has any purpose here. Now, there are some... Uh, there are some lines where knight captures uh, on h7 can be played, but uh, Capablanca decides it's uh, there, there's no point in doing this, so he simply goes back. Knight comes to f3. And now you might think, why did Capablanca go to g5? Because Capablanca saw that Alekhin would have to play g6, and then he would just have to go back. Uh, so did he really gain anything? He just lost uh, uh, two moves with the knight. Uh, but he has. Uh, look at all the weak dark squares around the black king now. He created a weakness. So now the knight is back on f3, protecting the pawn on d4. And now this bishop can be very nicely developed on h6. So Alekhin blocks it. King g7. Uh, we have bishop to g5, developing the bishop, also connecting rooks. And now uh, the queen will come to d2 to support uh, the bishop's uh, advance to h6. Uh, we have knight b to d5. Uh, Alekhin finally achieves his plan of centralizing this knight, even though it, it uh, took him really a lot of time. Uh, rook a to c1. Capablanca now takes full control of the c file. We have bishop to d7, and now comes queen to d2. Uh, the control on, uh, on the c file is uh, not all that great, as after rook comes to c8, the bishop is also helping out with uh, with this, uh, and also uh, black has a firm grasp uh, on the c8 square. So first, uh, queen to d2, threatening bishop h6 to win the rook on f8. Uh, we have knight to g8, and this is what Capablanca accomplished uh, when Capablanca played this queen to d2 move. Uh, of course, Capablanca never thought that uh, he would play bishop to h6, but he was expecting knight to g8, and he wants to trade the dark square bishops. And you might think from black's perspective, yes, white's dark square bishop is an excellent attacking piece, so I definitely want to get rid of it. Uh, but Capablanca sees more here. Uh, bishop captures, queen captures, and now bishop to e4. And here you can see that uh, Capablanca has removed the dark square bishops from the game. Uh, he has a knight on e5, which is a dark square. So that knight will not be uh, uh, able to be threatened uh, with the dark square bishop. You could only attack it uh, via the knights, and uh, the knights will need some time to to uh, counter this knight's effects uh, on e5. And even that, e even then, if you do get one knight to attack it, you still have the knight on f3 guarding it, which can always recapture on e5. And the other thing black could do is push f6, but then, I mean, Capablanca just said, okay, if you play f6, you're weakening your king even further, uh, I'm just gonna beat you then. Uh, so here we have bishop to b5, attacking uh, Capablanca's rook. Rook moves to e1 and now comes queen to d6. Uh, and Capablanca eliminates one of the knights. So bishop captures on d5. As long as Capablanca eliminates this knight and this knight isn't really doing anything, then Capablanca's knight on e5 uh, is a monster knight. Uh, so e captures on d5. You cannot capture with the queen because rook c5 wins the bishop here. So uh, after this, we have e captures on d5 and now... Uh, uh, Capablanca is better. He's better in development. He, his pieces are better. Uh, both of his rooks are occupying the only two open files on the board. Uh, but if Alekhin, if Alekhin can somehow play rook a c8, uh, this rook rather f to, uh, rook f to e8 and uh, activate this knight, then black will surely equalize. And Capablanca, of course, doesn't want that. 
Uh, so first queen to a5. Uh, using the fact that the bishop on b5 is undefended, Capablanca transfers his queen to c7 without losing uh, losing time. We have a6 defending the bishop, and now comes queen to c7. Here Capablanca offers a trade of queens, uh, which uh, can't really uh, be avoided. If you move the queen somewhere, then queen to b6 can be played, then the rook can come to c7, and white will just have a better position. So Aliyahin decides to trade queens. Queen captures, we have rook captures, and here's another problem for Aliyahin. Now you cannot defend the b7 pawn. If you try and defend it, let's say rook a b8, or the other rook comes to b8, which doesn't really make much sense, uh, as you would lose control of the f7 pawn, knight g5, and now you no longer can defend your f7 pawn. The two knights are attacking it, the rook is pinning it, also attacking it. If you play something like knight h6, then simply knight e6, check wins the game, uh, the pawn is pinned, you cannot capture, you lose the rook on f8. Uh, Black is just falling apart here. So, after rook to c7, we have h6. Uh, Aliyahin figures that uh, it's uh, of the utmost importance to take take away the g5 square from white's knight. Uh, and now rook captures on b7. Capablanca grabs a pawn, and uh, slowly but surely he's making progress. Uh, rook a to c8. Okay, Aliyahin is now down a pawn, but he takes control of, of the c file. And rook to c2 is uh, Aliyahin's next move. That's... Uh, uh, without question. Uh, we have b3, Capablanca prepares now a4. After a4 is played, the bishop has to move, and then the rook from b7 will also be protecting the b3 pawn. So by doing this, Capablanca takes care of the queen side. Uh, we have rook to c2 by Alechin, but there isn't uh, a better move here really. And we have a4, attacking the bishop. Here, uh, Alechin has two options. He can either go something like bishop to e8, which uh, gives further protection to the f7 pawn, but then comes knight d3. As you can see, the rook is uh, completely covering the queen side. Knight is coming to c5. The a6 pawn will fall. Uh, and on the other hand, black doesn't really have any good moves. Uh, this rook hasn't uh, uh, any potential to threaten anything. The bishop is pretty much stuck there. The rook is stuck there. The knight uh, can't really do all that much. Uh, and uh, the e5 square is, uh, you know, free for grabs for any of white's knights if needed. Uh, black can just pile, well, of course, first you will make some room for uh, the king, so you don't get uh, checkmated, but uh, after that, you know, it's uh, just a free-for-all. Uh, so, after this a4 move, Aliyahin said, okay, I'm, I can't go bishop e8, that's pointless, he went bishop to e2. But bishop to e2 also um, not, uh, well, it's, it's a move, but it doesn't work. Uh, here, Capablanca immediately uh, finds the best move and hones down on uh, the biggest weakness in Aliyahin's camp. He plays knight to h4, and here is the problem. The biggest threat here now is knight captures on g6. Uh, the king, of course, cannot capture, the other knight is covering g6 as well, and the pawn will not be able to recapture, as, of course, the pawn is pinned. So, how do you prevent this? You could go king f6, one of the possibilities, but then you just have a king on f6, you still can't move your rook, it's pretty much stuck guarding the f7 pawn, uh, white will simply start pushing the pawns and that king is a goner, uh, and you still have pretty much nothing to do here. On the other hand, after this knight to h4 move, you could protect it with bishop h5, yes you do protect it, but then g4 traps the bishop. Not, uh, not the greatest option. So really, not much... Uh, and not, you know, you don't really have any squares for this bishop. Uh, but okay, knight to h4 was played, and here Aliyahin uh, decides to play a bit more active as he's really out of options here. He plays h5, allows Capablanca to grab the g6 pawn to make some room for the king. Uh, we have knight h captures on g6, now comes rook to e8, uh, getting rook out of the way, but now uh, Aliyahin also loses the f7 pawn. Uh, uh, Aliyahin thought of everything, so he did make room for his... Uh, king on h6, we have king to h6, and now comes f4. And uh, still, black is just down so much material, he's down three pawns, and uh, still, without uh, without any serious counterplay, we have a5, limiting the movement of Capablanca's pawns on the queen side, and now comes knight back to h4. And here, it's, it's really a problem. Uh, you don't have a good way of preventing knight f5 checkmate. Uh, the king is stuck on h6, you can't go bishop d3, uh, the knight can capture it, uh, and, and while capturing it, for example, if here knight captures, guards the rook on e1, so you cannot capture the rook either, so not a problem. Here, uh, for, you know, uh, without uh, any any better ideas, Aliyahin decided to capture the knight on e5. We have f captures on e5, and now comes uh, king to g5. 
uh, Alekhin starts, uh, well, not running away with the king so much, but rather st start using the king as an attacking piece. Uh, we have g3 defending the knight here, and now comes king to g4. Uh, Alekhin has to hope for something. Uh, but uh, it doesn't work. Once again, I ask you to pause the video. Again, uh, Capablanca has a forced checkmate in three, and it's a very nice idea. Uh, you know, don't uh, move until you see it, as they would say. Uh, so I'll give you a couple of seconds, or as much as you want, since you can pause the video. Uh, for, for those of you that were able to do it, uh, really congratulations. Uh, you are an excellent checkmater in three, and it's not uh, that simple of an idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, Rook G7 check. I know it's not much of a puzzle, uh, we all hate puzzles that start with check, but uh, for this game it is as it is. Uh, King h3, and it was in this position that Capablanca played knight to g2, and uh, Alexander Alekhin resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, we once again return to, uh, to, to the uh, core of this game, which is uh, which are the dark squares. Capablanca eliminated, uh, well, forced Alekhin to eliminate Capablanca's dark square bishop, and then Capablanca gave uh, his own light square bishop for one of the knights, so the knights cannot uh, counter the effects of Capablanca's knights. Here, knight to f4 is the threat of checkmate, and there is no move that can even prolong the game. As f4 is a dark square, Alekhin still has only a light square bishop, you can't do anything with the rook, uh, th there are no moves that help. Uh, you can't move the king, so n nothing you can do here helps. Whatever move you make, let's say h4, knight f4 is checkmate. Uh, so yeah, after knight to g2, uh, Alexander Alekhin resigned the game, and a wonderful victory for Jose Ruel Capablanca, uh, and it's an important victory as two of them uh, are, you know, will become great uh, uh, lifelong rivals, so uh, history will always remember that Jose Ruel Capablanca has won the, the first game they, they played, and maybe also the second, but uh, uh, if you're interested, we can also show the second one, as it's also from this uh, event, it's from the Sovereign Cup, uh, Capablanca had to play uh, against... Um, uh, each of them two games, so we can also show that one. And I think I will before we go uh, to St. Petersburg uh, 1914 tournament. We're going to show the other game against Alekhin as well. And then we're going to talk a bit more about the results uh, Capablanca achieved here. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Rafael Grushka, Alfredo Alcendrini, uh, JVR Account, uh, Christian Conradi, and Kenneth McKay of Scotland uh, for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, uh, you can check to my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with some more interesting content. Uh, we're definitely continuing the Capablanca saga, but, uh, you know, whenever uh, an interesting suggestion pops up, uh, I will, of course, check it out and present that game as well. So, thank you all, and I will see you soon. Uh, have an excellent rest of your Saturday.